pass. But first, we may take them for granted, but the Great Lakes are an extraordinary resource. They're responsible for much of the development in the eight states and two Canadian provinces that surround them. But that growth and development is also increasing the demand for fresh water. In the third of our series on the lakes, Elizabeth Brackett looks at some innovative conservation measures designed to protect them. You have to start conserving water, and I think it has to be on everyone's agenda uh, here in the city of Chicago. Water conservation is a hard sell in Chicago. With the vast expanse of Lake Michigan on the city's doorstep, it's hard to understand why conserving water matters. It's an ongoing challenge with us educating citizens about, about the need to conserve because we've all grown up around this resource and it looks immense, it looks immune from harm, um, but it's not. Joe Deal says the city has actually done a good job of conserving water. Since 1990, water consumption in Chicago has been reduced by 20 percent, even while the population has increased. Primarily that has been the result of infrastructure improvements. Um, a lot of older cities have aging infrastructure and it leaks over time. Um, Department of Water Management has had an aggressive um, goal of 45 miles per year of repair and replacement of uh, water mains and that has um, really reduced our pumpage. A series of Supreme Court decisions allowed Chicago to take 737 million gallons of water out of the lake every day. When water leaks out of the sewer pipe, the city gets no benefit from the water it has taken out of the lake. Chicago also loses water when it leaks through the locks at the mouth of the Chicago River. The locks were put in place after the flow of the Chicago River was reversed in 1848 to keep sewage out of the lake. The Chicago River now runs away from the lake and eventually into the Mississippi River. There's always some leakage. These lock gates have been in existence since the late 1930s uh, and they need to be replaced. Water conservation is also hampered by the fact that Chicago remains one of the few large cities without water meters for its residential customers. That leaves customers with little incentive to watch the amount of water they use. We understand metering is an important component of water conservation and the mayor has directed the Department of Water Management to move in that direction and they've put together a plan and they're actually reviewing RFPs currently for the first phase of metering which is um, an automatic meter reading system. Currently, commercial, industrial, and residential buildings are metered. But the city concedes it could take years before Chicago sees the benefit from metering residential homes. Studies have shown and practice has shown that if, if people pay for the water that they use, uh, they do tend to conserve. But Chicago is working on some innovative conservation measures, like the $15 million project to return rainwater from the roof on the newest McCormick Place building to Lake Michigan. Now all the rainwater is going to go into one pipe. It's going to go on the east, uh, the, uh, east side of it, underneath to north of the island, formerly Mixfield. Uh, and it will go up there, and basically fresh rainwater will basically be brought back into the lake instead of basically putting into our sewer system. It took 15 months to bore through the rock below Lakeshore Drive to dig the tunnel to the lake. The inlet shaft goes 160 feet down into the... 12 and a half foot diameter storm tunnel flows uh, by gravity feed to the outlet structure which we're standing on. It comes up that same 160 feet in a 23 foot diameter shaft and then flows through the outlet chamber into the lake. The project should return 55 million gallons of water to the lake every year. Deal says it can also show homeowners a way to conserve water. Can people do things like McCormick Place roof? They certainly can. This, you could actually consider this one of the world's largest disconnected downspouts, and that's something that people can do. The Rain Barrel Program is, is exactly what we're talking about. The city has distributed 800 rain barrels this summer. As the rainwater is used to water lawns and gardens, it flows back into the groundwater and into Lake Michigan, rather than into the sewers, which eventually send the treated water down the Mississippi River. Rain barrels are very simple. We had it many, many years ago. When you think about recycling, we're basically recycling some old ideas. There were always rain barrels in many, many communities and many homes. And now today, what we're looking at is basically more and more rain barrels, both for bungalows and two flats and apartment buildings. The city is working on another program that keeps water out of the sewer system and eventually returns that water to the lake. 
This alley doesn't look any different from any other city alley, but it is. It's a green alley. The green alley is a concept that the Department of Transportation is working on to convert impervious surfaces to pervious. Basically, we see the alleys as an opportunity to take a surface that used to collect rainwater and funnel it into the sewer system and disconnect those from the sewer system and allow that water to percolate back into the soil. The difference is below the surface, where the catch basin allows the stormwater to drain into the soil rather than into the sewer system. It's important, again, because all of the water we keep out of the sewer system, we keep in the Great Lakes Basin, we're recharging the aquifer, and most importantly, we're changing the way we think about stormwater. We're viewing it as a resource, not a waste product. The Green Alley program is a pilot program that currently covers less than four miles out of the 1,900 miles of alleys in the city. The city is also experimenting with another way to conserve water. These waterless urinals can be found in the second floor men's room at City Hall. A normal urinal would have water flowing down to wash everything away. This one is purely gravity fed. Everything flows through this cartridge that you see in the bottom. This is a cutaway of the cartridge. Um, it's designed to, to block odors from coming back out, but allow everything else to pass through and down the drain just like a traditional urinal. Each one of these urinals, it's estimated, could save about 40,000 gallons of water per year. Could you do this with a regular toilet? Um, there are um, advanced composting toilets. We're, I don't think we're ready to go there in City Hall yet. There are also simple things everyone can do to conserve water. Water lawns in the early morning or evening so water isn't lost to evaporation. Buy water efficient appliances. Turn the water off when soaping up for a shower. And turn off the water when brushing your teeth. Alliance for the Great Lakes President Cam Davis says all these measures and more are needed. In the future, I see that we need to get much smarter about water conservation. And there's a lot of good incentive to do that. It's usually cheaper to conserve water than it is to try to find new sources of water. It's the smart thing to do, and it's the ecological thing to do as well. And, says Davis, conservation is critical to preserving the Great Lakes as a resource for future generations. For Chicago Tonight, I'm Elizabeth Brackett. Environmental reporting on Chicago Tonight is made possible in part by the Joyce Foundation, dedicated to protecting the Great Lakes. Fresh water at the heart of America.